finals are the most exciting time of year for us as umpires. So it's extremely disappointing we didn't get there this season. However, it will make next year's final season all the more sweeter. Um, I'll just go through what we've got planned for the night. So we'll start off for the night. Um, we've got a few special guest speakers and some representatives as well as some representatives from the league. Um, for, we have the pleasure of having AFL umpires Matt Stevick, who's coming in from Perth, um, along with Nick Brown on the line. So we've got some Q&A set up with them, which will be great to hear their insights after they did provide so much during the year at our training sessions. Then we'll move on to our awards section of the night where we'll run through all the awards that we have to hand out, um, which credit which will reward those umpires who have put in um, outstanding performances throughout the year. Um, I'd now like to hand over to Dave Hannon um, to say a few words. Over to you, Dave. Thanks, John. Uh, welcome, everybody. Um, I won't be saying too much tonight. I've John and um, and Ben will be organising the night. Uh, yeah, I, I really, it's been an eventful year, um, but I think it's been a successful year. And I'd just like to say thanks to everybody um, for really being part of it and um, and really embracing our, um, embracing us um, as well. So, yep, yeah, I had that there. Sorry, can't get my backing up. Um, yeah, so without, I just wanted to say thank you to all the staff, um, everyone in the office, um, Tim, Jess, um, Sean, Brad, um, Peter Nichols as well. Um, Peter Nichols, <clears throat> anyone who doesn't know, he's actually moved on. He's uh, retired. So I just want to say thank you, Peter, for, for being there for umpires and really supporting us over many, many years. Um, and we will miss you. Um, as well there. Also, I just want to thank the board as well, the whole, the Yarra board, who have been very su supportive over the years to all umpires. Um, and it's, you know, great to see over the years that, you know, lots of coming to games and really supporting the umpires uh, for, for many, many years they have. Um, and also Michelle in the office as well, if I didn't mention to her. So thanks to all the staff and just thanks to the umpires, you, everyone out there who, you know, get up and do the games with a smile on your face. So well done, guys. Um, it's, been a, it's been a really good year and I think you should all hold your heads really high. I'll have one award later on. I'll talk to you later. Thanks for that, Dave. I'll now have, ha, uh, hand it over to Aidan House from the League, who has an announcement for us. Uh, thanks, John and Ben. Um, I'd like to announce our new major umpire sponsor for the umpires for next year. Um, the Arrow Junior Football League and BJS Insurance are delighted to announce a new partnership for the league's umpires starting in 2022. BJS Insurance Brokers are qualified insurance brokers who enjoy an enviable reputation for their professionalism in the insurance broking industry, while also having the ability to structure complete business insurance programs for their valued customer base supported by both local and global insurance markets. Uh, this partnership will have the BJS logo featured proudly on the YJFL umpires game day shirts, as well as on digital and any other material relating to the YJFL umpires. Uh, the YJFL are proud to have BJS insurance brokers um, on board as principal umpire's partner, as well as being the supplier of the league's insurance needs. So all new umpiring tops will have the BJS logo on the back, and we look forward to seeing those on the um, YJFL grounds in the future from next year onwards. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks for that, Aidan. Um, so now we're just got a, a sort of a snapshot in numbers for the, uh, for the 2021 season. Um, so in 2021, there are 393 registered umpires across field, boundary and goal, covering over 170 games every weekend. 109 of our umpires were players, 52 were female, and we had 122 new umpires join us this year. And as a special mention, over 10 rounds this season, the most games was done by Tony Hope with 25 in total, with five rounds of umpiring three games back to back on a Sunday. Um, so well done to Tony and in all umpires who umpired any games this season. Uh, now I'd like to pass it over to Ishbel Moody from the YJFL board for another message.
Thanks very much <clears throat> and welcome everyone. And um, so my name is Ishbel Moody and I'm the Vice President of the, the YJFL. And I'm really um, happy to be invited and to attend this um, meeting tonight. Um, as, as the others have already said, it would be much better if we can do this in person. But at the moment, you know, the, the, the restrictions don't allow it. So I think this is the, the, the best or the next best thing that we could do. So th thank you for attending. And um, on behalf of the board, um, I really want to um, give a, a big thank you um, to all of our umpires this year. Um, so our, our experienced umpires as well as our new umpires. Um, we are really grateful for the, the work that you do. Um, our league couldn't um, just couldn't um, go ahead without you. We wouldn't be able to have any games without any umpires. Um, so we really value um, all the activity and all the work that you do for us um, and on behalf of us. Um, I know that from time to time, um, you know, mistakes can happen, but um, just just be be aware that we are fully supportive of you. Um, we think that the job that you do is wonderful. Um, we encourage you to keep learning. We encourage you to keep being involved in the game. Um, we absolutely love that involvement that you've got in the game. So, you know, um, please keep going. Um, we, we love having you. Um, and in particular, I just want to say thank you to all of the umpires for this year. We managed to get through 10 games. You know, we were hoping to get through a full season and get 14, but we got through 10, which is wonderful. It's over 70% of, of um, what we were trying to do before um, circumstances overtook us. Um, so thank you for, for that. Um, I'm really just want to say I can't wait until next year you know really looking forward to to our season next year really looking forward to having you come back next year um, and and keep up the the wonderful work that you do um, so thank you very much and just handing back to you thanks Israel and I know us as umpires and as umpires coaches we really appreciate the support of the league um, with everything that you do um, so now we've prepared a little photo and video montage to sort of celebrate what we do as umpires. Um, so off we go with that. Uh, I hope we all appreciate the presentation put forward there. It was great to see so many umpires represented there and sort of representing what a great season we did end up having. I'd now like to introduce our first guest speaker for the evening. We are very fortunate to have Matt Stevick on the line with us here. Um, over in Perth, as I understand, preparing to potentially umpire in the grand final this year. Matt, along with Nick Brown, were one of the two representatives that we had from the AFL umpiring department who came down and I think attended two or three training sessions with us this year at the Bulleen Group. I know as coaches, we really appreciated the advice and support you gave us. And I definitely know that the, um, the kids who were coached by you guys did. They kept on asking me, when are they going to come back? Can we do another drill like Matt did? Or can we do another drill like Nick did? So I really appreciate that support. I'd also like to thank the two other AFL umpires that did come down and help us throughout the year. We had Michael Marantelli during the community umpiring round, boundary umpire who helped our boundary umpires. I know the boundary umpires at Berlin took a lot out of that session. 
um, and especially East as well. And I'm pretty sure he's over there in Perth with you, Matt, preparing to what hopefully be another grand final for him as well. Um, we also had Michael Craig, AFL goal umpire, run a field umpiring game with Oscar Bolter during this year. That's sort of a once in a lifetime opportunity for Oscar and I know he appreciated it and we thank Michael for coming along and helping us with that. We were also very fortunate as well to have Brody Grundy and Nick Vlosten in the goals for that one. So I'd like to pass on our thanks to all four of you for coming down. Um, so yeah, nice to see you, Matt. How's Perth going? <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, my apologies for my very long hair, everyone. It's uh, I'm into my third week of, of hotel quarantine outside of being able to do games and, and train. So haven't been able to venture out to the barbers as yet, but uh, we get out on, on Sunday and then, yeah, wait for the news on, on Monday, potentially about the, the last game. But, um, look, it's been a really challenging um, two and a half weeks. I, I started in Tasmania and did week one there and then we – we went on to Brisbane where we're in sort of uh, two nights of really hard lockdown in the hotel. So basically couldn't leave our floor at the hotel and we needed to get to the ground about four hours before the game and secure ourselves in the indoor cricket, cricket nets area before then going into our room. So it was, that was week two and then a flight over to Perth to wait for potentially week three games of which I got the Adelaide one. So after a week in, in Perth, it was then, jumping on a plane back to Adelaide for week three and then immediately back here to obviously wait for, for week four. So, look, it's been um, been an enjoyable sort of two and a half weeks, but a challenging one. And um, like you all, just want to commend you all on being able to keep the games and the seasons going. I think we all, we all play a fantastic part in the game and um, you should be really proud of that. Oh, yeah, definitely um, racking up those frequent flyer miles there. Um, unfortunately, we as a league, we missed out on umpiring finals again for the second year in a row. Um, and so many umpires would have to wait to umpire our first final series. Do you remember what it was like for yourself when you first started umpiring and the grand finals? Yeah, absolutely. I, I still, to be honest, I mean, it was a long, long time ago. 1992, I started my umpiring. Um, but I remember at the time, and I remember doing my first fourth grand final, which was an under 15s, I think it was. And and to me, at that stage of my career, it was it was the biggest day in sport for me that day, and and also for the teams. And I, I remember it. It was at Coralin, and it was the a lot of the local footy. You know, they're absolutely packed out in terms of the fans and the spectators. And you know, there's something pretty special about a grand final, regardless of you know, the age level and um, just general level of footy or standard. It's it's the last game where two sides are trying to win that premiership. So it's a really special feeling to be a part of any final and certainly a grand finals that, that bit more special again. Definitely. Um, I'm probably at that AFL level, especially getting that grand final is a huge achievement. How do you find that week leading up to a grand final? And what's your sort of favourite part of the week? And I assume that that varies now from experiencing it in Melbourne to then having it in Brisbane last year and potentially now having it in Perth this year. Yeah, look, it's been really different. And so I guess my advice to everyone, albeit we're at different levels, but you need to be really open-minded and flexible. So you know, going back three years ago in Melbourne, it was, you'd find out Monday night, Monday afternoon, go to the Brownlow. And then there'd be lots of activities on in the lead up to grand final day with the parade and some other things. Last year was very different in Queensland. And um, not too many people know, but the day of the grand final, we moved all our four months worth of luggage and things from the Gold Coast up to Brisbane on the day of the game. Um, it poured rain for about five hours as we were unpacking and, and getting into our new accommodation. And then we headed off to the ground at about five o'clock uh, for the night grand final. This year's different again, if I happen to be a part of it, um, you know, from the prelim to the grand final, it'll be two weeks. And so, you know, every experience has been different, but I've just learned to 
try and roll with the punches and embrace as much as I can. Um, you've had such an amazing sustained success at the AFL level, I know being involved in a grand final all the way back from 2012. Um, is there anything that you could share with us about that's assisted you in being such a good umpire, whether that be the preparation or as other aspects of the umpiring? Yeah, there's lots of parts to it. There's the physical preparation side in terms of getting, you know, fit enough to be able to uh, be available each week for selection. And that's just not for a three or four week period. But that's, you know, I've tried to do that year over year. And this is this is year 18 for me. Um, the last couple of years in particular, I've worked really hard with our sports psychologist probably once a week. And and. Just very quickly, you know, a lot of the things I, I work with uh, Richie about, it's not just about, you know, how do I get that bit better on field? It's, it's to do with a lot of things off field in terms of how I um, can become more efficient and, and better use my mental energy, you know, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm a new dad now or have, have been for a while, but, um, you know, having a child and being a father and some other challenges and, and stresses in life. My wife's currently 34 weeks pregnant as we speak today. Um, so he's played a huge part in me being able to, um, I guess, from a mental uh, point of view, be able to far better navigate my way through plenty of challenges, both on and off the field. So that's been a big part. I think my attitude with respect to learning, you know, and I think something for everyone, it doesn't matter how long you've been doing umpiring, um, you can always learn, you can always do something a better way or a different way. And so I think having an, an open-minded attitude and a uh, preparedness to continue learning, I think has been a bit of a cornerstone that's helped me be able to sort of stay pretty grounded and, and keep working hard to, you know, continue to try and perform as, as well as I possibly can. Certainly. Um, just one last question. You sort of addressed it a bit there, but if you were to give you what your one bit of advice for young umpires to continue on doing it, what do you reckon it would be? Sorry, I missed a bit of that. So that's that was one piece of advice to the umpires yeah so as a young umpire who's just starting out what would sort of be your one bit of advice you'd give them to continue their development as an umpire okay um well it would be to work hard and to use the 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 coaches and the other umpires around them to help them learn um you know being able to ask questions uh, go out of your way to ask other umpires how they might uh, approach a certain thing on the field or a challenging challenging aspect of the game. But also I think, Aidan, the key is at any age, it doesn't matter how inexperienced you are, you can try and develop some really good routines going into your game. So if that's an under-12 game, you know, and you're starting out, try and learn, so prepare and, and try and learn the rules and and get some sort of little routine and it might be just an early night to bed and you might, you know, write a couple of things down about what you might try and achieve out of the game or what a couple of your focus areas are and just try and start getting into a little bit of a routine. And if you do that, you can sort of, you know, trial and error over time because some things will work, some things won't, but that's a really good way to sort of lay a bit of a foundation as you as you climb up the, the ladder a bit. Thanks for that, Matt. Uh, thanks for all that insight you've given, not only tonight and the time you've given, but throughout the season as well. I know all of us as umpires really appreciated the effort you went to and staying training and answering all the questions. We really appreciate that time. And hopefully we can see you again next year and also good luck in two weeks' time if you get the nod. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks, thanks very much. I'd now like to move on to acknowledging our service awards for this year. This is um, important to recognise those who've given us, who've given time to the league. Um, so we'll go over, these are all our umpires who have done 10 years of service to the league. So congratulations, Jordan.
Patrick, Michael, Sam, Abdul, Ben, Josh, and Harry. It's really not many get to that five-year mark, so it's really impressive if you want, and hopefully your umpiring journey can continue for another five years. Um, I'd also like to congratulate David Hannon on getting to his 10-year achievement. This is even more impressive. Dave puts in every single week. A lot of you wouldn't see the effort that goes on behind the scenes with Dave in not only his umpiring, but also his management, getting all the appointments done and getting training planned and his liaising with the league to look after us as umpires. So congratulations, Dave, on the 10 years of service. I'd now like to hand over to, um, <laughs> to Andrew Tauber, the AFL Umpiring Growth and Development Coordinator for Victoria, to talk about the AFL connection and the importance of umpiring at the community level. Uh, thanks very much, boys, for having me tonight. And thanks to, to Dave and the rest of the Yarra Junior footy team for, uh, for putting on um, a season of something. So there was a lot of work done behind the scenes, as you boys have already mentioned, um, for everyone to have games and for, for everyone out, out there watching tonight to be able to go out and umpire um, this year. So I'm here to um, talk about a little bit of a different initiative that we started this year, um, which is called the Umpiring Engagement Award. So it's not necessarily about an umpire this time. This is more about uh, a particular football club so in 2020, umpiring saw the highest number of non-returning umpires and the lowest intake of new umpires. So this meant that we, we needed a new strategy to recruit additional umpires. What we know about umpires is that over 90% of you currently play or have played football. So players are our largest resource for recruitment. And playing while umpiring has um, many, many benefits. So players, players who do umpire, they get access to the umpire coaching to improve their game knowledge and understanding. They build on their fitness by umpiring in the morning before their game in the afternoon. They develop many life skills that you're all working on week to week. And when clubs engage in umpire recruitment as well, their community members moderate their own behaviour towards every other umpire that's within the league. So it benefits everyone involved. So how we work out um, an award for umpire engagement, we actually look at a few things about each club. Aidan, if you want to just go to the next slide. Oh, we've missed the slides, all right. So what we look at is we look at how many, um, how, many how many teams a club will have from under 12s all the way through to under 17s. And the aim through this program is to have one umpire per team within those age groups. And um, when clubs can recruit a one-to-one -one ratio is what we call it, we see many benefits throughout the league um, within those football club communities. So uh, the Yarra Junior Football League Umpire Engagement Award goes to Surrey Park Football Club. So hopefully there are a few umpires watching tonight who are from Surrey Park. So they've got 10 teams who are from under 12s through to under, I believe, under 18s or 17s. And they have 12 umpires registered as well. And uh, that's a, a rate of 120% umpire to teams ratio. So if there's any other Surrey Park uh, umpire players out there, well done. Congratulate the rest of your friends um, and the rest of your club. If there's any other players or umpires from other clubs, uh, I would highly recommend that you uh, spread the word of umpiring within your club. There's many benefits to getting more players umpiring next year. Um, you can also reach out to anyone within your club and they can contact Dave directly um, to help organise their club to get involved a little bit more next year. Thanks for that, Andrew. Um, and yeah, congrats to Surrey Park on winning that award. I know definitely at our group, there were quite a few from Surrey Park, so it was good to see. Um, I'd now like to move over onto our umpires accreditation course and the umpires that can, completed that this season. Um, so congratulations to all that are listed there on completing your level one of the umpire accreditation course in 2021. Um, unfortunately, we had one more session of this planned 
and that couldn't take place. But it's still a credit to all of you for putting in the effort um, and heading down and listening to John for an hour speak about umpiring. Um, this process does involve a little practice, the, um, the sitting down and listening to John, but you also assessed on game day. So everyone passed with flying colours, which was fantastic to see. Um, we'll now move on to the second half of the evening, which will be the awards. So I'd like to pass over to Ben to start that process. Thanks, John. So the first round of awards we've got are the coaches awards. Um, so in general, these are awarded to the umpires that that are the best to work with out throughout the season as coaches. They take on the feedback about feedback about their umpiring and put the coaching points to use in their matches every weekend. Each of these umpires has had an excellent participation in training and are always willing to have a chat and take on some advice when observed on match day. Um, so the first award we've got is the Bullion Group Field Umpire Coaches Award. So the Coaches Award from the Bullion Group is going to an umpire in their second year. While I did more coaching with the young, younger umpires, every time I took the senior group with this umpire I was involved with, I was impressed with their effort and attention at training. And I'm always surprised that they are only a second year umpire as their professionalism and easiness to coach is usually seen in much more experienced umpires. So the Coaches Award for the Bullying Group, Field Umpires, goes to Tom Masters. Throughout the season, Tom was always at training always early and always up for a chat with the coaches. He worked really hard at training, he listens well and he applies the advice quickly to his umpiring. Um, he was very quickly given some high level games. A highlight for him was probably the under 16 Yarra versus Mornington Peninsula rep game. Here he had to quickly pick up the three umpire system and took on the advice of the other umpires and coaches there on the night to ensure the game was umpired to a high standard. Tom's friendliness, dedication and willingness to get better is why he has won the Coaches Award for the Bullying Group in 2021. Congratulations, Tom. I'd now like to move on to the Linden Park Field Umpires Coaches Award. The Coaches Award for the Linden Park Group is going to a kid in his second year of umpiring with us as well. This kid is always at training and at the front of each group asking questions and bringing a lot of energy to training overall. Although it's his second year overall, it's his first in, as a field umpire and he applied himself tremendously to this. The winner of the Coaches Award for the Linden Park Group is Fergus Grave. Fergus was a joy to coach all year and was at training every week. I was fortunate enough to actually run a game with Fergus this year um, and his development from the first quarter to the last quarter showed his commitment and dedication to taking on feedback and getting better. He also wasn't afraid to give me some advice as well. <laughs> Fergus was always happy to umpire two games for us on a weekend, and a few times his appointment did change during the week. He never complained. Um, congratulations to Fergus on winning the Coaches Award for the Linden Park Group. I'd now like to hand over to East Watson, the Bullying Park Boundary Umpire Coach, to award the Coach's Award for the Boundary Umpires. Hello, everyone. Um, so tonight I have the pleasure of um, presenting a few awards, namely one of them being the Boundary Umpires Coach's Award for the Bullying Park Group. Uh, this kid has been an absolute pleasure to coach. Um, he's extremely polite, patient, and has always remained eager to learn umpiring since day one. His communication throughout the year was excellent, always willing to let him let me know if he could do two games to start, despite playing himself. Um, this award is uh, for the bullying coaches group. Uh, sorry, boundary umpire of the bullying group goes to Hamish Stewart. As said earlier, polite, driven and a quick learner, Hamish was a pleasure to teach and an even better umpire. It was his first year this year, but his level of development was quick, and by the end of the year, he became a very well-rounded um, umpire and person. Thanks. Thanks for that, East. Um, we'll now award the Coaches Award for the Linden Best for the Linden Park Boundary Umpire. Um, this award goes to one of our six new Boundary Umpires that joined us at Linden, Linden Park this year, which is great to see. Um, this is a very difficult award to hand out as they all performed extremely well during games and showed great commitment at training as well. The winner of the Linden Park Boundary Umpire Coaches Award is Jennifer Moore. 
Jennifer was softly spoken from her first training session, but we could all tell as the season progressed, her confidence grew. I still remember Bound Jump High coach Ben McDonnell letting me know that in her first game, which was a youth girls game, she didn't actually get to throw the ball in once, um, as all the, bound, all the ball ins were on the other side of the ground. Uh, never, nevertheless, she wasn't deterred by this and stuck with it. And Jennifer ended up umpiring as high as under 16 boys, which is a fantastic achievement in her first year. Congratulations, Jennifer. So up next, we have um, some of the most improved awards. Um, I believe. That's correct. Um, so. PowerPoint to update. <laughs> So make sure we get the order right. Yep. Okay. Um, so these awards are given um, to umpires who show an excellent development of their umpiring over the year. And these umpires have also shown their improvement through moving up a number of grades since last season by increasing their fitness or umpiring more games each weekend or just improving their general umpiring skills. Um, they are particularly dedicated to their own performance improvement and shown a keen interest in taking the next steps in their umpiring journey. Um, so up first, we're going to have uh, John and we're going to have Nick Brown helping to present the Most Improved Field Umpire Award. So thanks Nick for joining us tonight. Um, we'll have another short little Q&A with Nick as well. Um, but Nick came down two or three times as well to our training session and I know his involvement was greatly appreciated from everyone and he brought new and fresh ideas which the kids definitely enjoyed and sometimes enjoyed too much that they didn't actually focus on their umpire and they were too busy playing football. It was good to see that level of engagement. Um, I'll ask the same question to you, Nick, as I did to Matt. Do you remember umpiring your first grand final? Um, yeah, I do. Thanks. Firstly, thanks to you guys for having me along tonight and um, well done to everybody on getting through the season. Another tough year and probably didn't end it the way that we all wanted it to with, with the COVID, but um, good on you and you should be acknowledged for yeah, having a go and getting out there and, and keeping the season alive for as long as it did. But to the question, my first final, I do remember uh, my first final and I was sort of, I took a bit of a different journey, I suppose, with my um, with my football, not necessarily starting out, umpiring at a junior competition and sort of made my way in through school and, and um, found, I did a course at, at school as part of my... Um, school sport and then umpired actually in the amateurs and my first final I being on the boundary uh, back then and um, it's such an exciting it's a big build up you sort of you, you go along for the training on the Tuesday night and they read out everybody's names right from down from the A grade down through to the 19s divisions and uh, or the under 19s divisions and I still remember getting getting read out and then uh, participating in my first final at um, Central Reserve there on Springvale Road and uh, such a big day it's a big build up for, for you know every umpire involved and uh, it's one that I'll uh, hold close a close memory to my to my heart for the rest of my life. Um, also as a relatively new field umpire compared to Matt, how have you managed umpiring in probably more some high profile games this year? For example as an Adelaide fan I know and I talked to you about umpiring in your first showdown this year, and I'm pretty sure you also umpired in a derby as well, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, yeah, I did. It was, um, it's something that I think, and Matt does it. Matt does it so well, which is why he's still alive at the the pointy end of the season. And um, it all comes back to me for that for that preparation that you can do during the week, and and um, knowing that when you walk out there on the ground that you've done everything that you can possibly in your preparation uh, whether that be you know writing down through your match plan or understanding the game styles of the two clubs or or knowing the players names right through to your your physical side of your preparation as well ticking off all your your training sessions that you need to do and everybody has their differences with that um, and it's about finding what's right right for you and i think this year um, which is why I got some of those, those bigger games was I was able to find a really good balance. Um, and I felt like this year I was able to do that a lot more consistently than I had in the past. And and I know that there's still things that I want to tinker with with that in the off-season and, and go away and work on. And, and I'll put those uh, plans in place over the off-season so that next year we can come back and, and do that as well. But the sort of the big games, they're, they're all big games. 
um, when you when you think of it, and I know some probably get a bit more a bit more coverage than than others at certain stages of the year. But um, you know, every game, whether that be right from a, from a junior game and under fifteen, that's the most important game for those two clubs on that day, um, and therefore we need to take that mindset as well. So for me, it was just about making sure that I was preparing and doing everything uh, right during the week to get myself right for that big game on that weekend. Thanks very much for that, Nick. Um, I'll now hand over to you to present the most improved field umpire for season 2021. Yeah, great. Thanks. Um, the winner of the most improved uh, field umpire for 2021 is an umpire who's in his fourth year uh, with the Arrow Juniors Football League. They came on in leaps and bounds this year and were trusted in many important games towards the end of the season. Um, he has set himself up very well uh, to umpiring at a high grade grand final in 2021. The winner of the 2021 Most Improved Field Umpire is Josh Stacey. Um, so I'll just read out a little bit more about Josh as well. Uh, Josh went from previously doing a high of under 15s in 2019 to umpiring two games of under 15s and under 16s and Colts every week. In the final round of the season, he was awarded his, with his first Colts, great, uh, Colts one game, sorry, uh, which was an incredible achievement. Josh performed very professionally when umpiring and has the respect of everyone when he was out in the field. Josh works hard at training. He's always up the front in any of the fitness drills and always asks questions during the skill drills. As the season has developed, he has become one of the leaders on the Linden Park umpiring group by passing on his knowledge at training and leading by example. So congratulations, Josh, and well done on this award. Thanks very much for that, Nick, um, and congratulations, Josh. Um, thank you very much for your time and commitment you've given to us this year. Um, we really appreciate it, and I know all the kids got a lot out of it. And good luck with your future in the AFL umpire um, department as well. Thanks, mate. I appreciate that, and um, I hope to see you guys all around on the track uh, next year and as we enter into another season. Thanks, Nick. Um, I now like to hand it back over to East to present the most improved boundary umpire. I think that's up next. Um, right. So this award goes to an umpire that has been with us for a few years now. Um, from the start, he was always shown great potential, and this year has been a great help uh, to me and the team. He has stepped up considerably, often covering three games, a remarkable feat in and of itself, especially when it comes to running the boundary. Uh, the most improved boundary umpire award uh, goes to Harry Apostolopoulos. A lot of fun to coach and an excellent personality, Harry took on new tips and ideas quickly, developing into a Colts umpire throughout the year. Harry showed a keen interest in moving up and taking on games in higher divisions. Personally, it has been great to see his development up the ranks and his eagerness to umpire as many games as possible, further highlighting Harry's commitment to umpiring. Congratulations, Harry. Thanks, Eats, and congratulations, Harry. Um, the next award is for now. The next category of awards are for the best umpires. Um, so these awards go to the umpires in each category who excel across all areas of umpiring. Um, they display the traits of professionalism required at training and in matches that all umpires should look up to. And often they are the leaders of their umpiring crews out in the field um, and set the best example for all umpires in the league to follow. Um, so first up, we've got the award for best first year boundary umpire. So this award is going to an umpire who in their first game fit right into the umpiring crew out in the field. It can be challenging, especially as a new umpire, especially as a boundary, to work in Colts games with other umpires who have lots of experience and know each other very well. So the best first year boundary umpire goes to Finn Horan. Finn umpired two games almost every week with many Colts one and two matches. As a slightly older starter, he quickly picked up the fundamentals of boundary umpiring. Um, I umpired with Finn many times throughout the year after that first game, and every time he impressed me with his coverage of the ground, his fitness and his throws, but most importantly with working with the other boundary and field umpires. By the end of the year, even giving me and the other field umpires some advice on either who had played well for votes or where I'd made maybe an incorrect decision here or there. Um, in many ways, this is the best part of having boundary umpires on the weekend, um, having some more friendly faces on the field to either greet you and have a chat at quarter time, or knowing that when they throw the ball in, it will be high and straight. 
Um, Finn would have looked look forward to more uh, to a high Colts grand final at the end of this season, and I look forward to umpiring with him many more times over the years ahead. Congratulations to Finn on an excellent first season with Yarra, and I hope to have you around for many more years to come. Uh, now I'm going to pass it back over to East uh, for the Robert Hill Award for the Boundary Umpire of the Year. All right, so uh, the Robert Hill Award um, for this year, uh, there's nothing really bad I can say about this this person. Polite, hardworking, and an excellent boundary umpire. This umpire hasn't stepped below the Colts level all year. He is often able to cover two games if required, a further testament to his ability to run the ground and umpire effectively across multiple games. Uh, the Robert Hill Award goes to Archie Bettyhoff. Archie has been an umpire with us for multiple years now, alongside his brothers. His ability to work hard each game and ensure he's keeping up with play is a commendable achievement and shows the determination and effort he brings to umpiring. Archie has set himself up for a high-grade grand final in the following years to come. Congratulations, Archie. There we go. Thanks, East, for that. Um, so up next, we'll have Tim Murray to present the best first-year umpire. Thanks, John and Ben. Uh, great to see everybody. Love seeing those claps on the screen. So if you hear something you like, keep going with the claps. Um, I wanted to just talk a bit about my sons. My two boys umpired. Ah, good on you guys. Keep the claps coming. Uh, my two boys umpired uh, in the Yarra Footy League, one still umpiring in the BAFA, in the VFL squad, actually. Um, and uh, my eldest was really trying to coach my youngest son. And his one piece of wisdom that he imparted, new um, the umpires I know will understand it, was whatever you do, don't report anybody. Anybody identify with that? Give me a clap if you can identify with that. Now, we had a tough year. Yeah, good on you guys. Come on. <laughs> we had a tough year, and I know some of you have had to come to the tribunal. Just want to say thanks. Um, we'll, we'll always have your back. We'll always look after you and support you and make sure that you're uh, safe and uh, feel as if you're doing the right thing to, to look after our great game. Because the game for the players is a great game if it's controlled and everybody plays within the spirit of the game. So that, from my point of view, is what having older and umpires working together is all about. Just coaching, guiding, mentoring, and keeping everybody, you know, keeping the learning going. Now, my, my job tonight is to announce the best first-year field umpire. Uh, the winner of the best first-year umpire is an umpire who, through the first training sessions, the coaches could see a lot of potential with him. It was a particularly difficult award to give this year, as there are a number of first umpires who quickly moved into higher games and looked like ready-made umpires out on the field. The winner of the best first-year umpire, though, is Will Edney. Congratulations, Will. Will, lots of claps. Come on, lots of claps. Good on you. <laughs> I love the claps. Will was open to feedback and coaching, the coaches say, that was at training and was also open to asking questions on game day and scenarios he encountered during the previous week. I love that, Will. Being curious is a great thing. I employ people in our office and curiosity is the greatest quality because it helps you get better if you're understanding why things are the way they are. Um, when observed in his second or third game, he already looked like a natural umpire out there, of course, once his shirt was tucked in, said the coaches. Uh, and he was in line to umpire a high under 12 grand final, which is a great effort from a first-year umpire. So, Will, congratulations. Thanks very much for that, Tim. And your support and of the umpiring crew has definitely noticed through us as coach the passing it down. So I really appreciate that support. Anytime, guys. I'd now like to move it on to the Encouragement Awards for 2021. These awards are for the umpires that show all the qualities of a great umpire of the future. They are very coachable, hardworking at training and in matches, and have shown great improvement over the season. They also have a little X factor in them. There's a little thing that will take them from being just a good umpire to being a great umpire if given the chance. 
as our speakers have shown tonight, umpiring is definitely not an easy task. And as, the, and as coaches, we hope that all umpires, in particular these two award winners, will continue their umpiring journey into next season and beyond. Uh, now let's present the Bulling Park Group Encouragement Award. The winner of the Encouragement Award goes to one of the more vocal umpires at training. Always talking, probably usually have to tell him to be quiet once or twice during training, but he's always there listening and asking questions and working hard during matches. Um, the winner of the Bullying Park Group Encouragement Award is Luke Karasprett. Um, Luke was definitely challenged this year, getting up into some higher games that he may or may not have expected, but credit goes to Luke. He showed great commitment in those games and definitely umpired them to a high standard. Um, Luke definitely has has a great future in umpiring here at the league and with commitment over the next few years can definitely see him progressing through the ranks and umpiring a high grand final in years to come. Congratulations, Luke. So up next, we've got the Linden Park Group Encouragement Award. So this award goes to a first year umpire who immediately made, so similar to Luke, immediately made an impression on the umpiring group with their passion and energy. I umpired their first game with them and straight away they controlled the rowdy under 11s like an expert with a commanding presence and excellent communication. And we all know how that difficult that can be with the under 11s. Um, so the Linden Park Group Encouragement Award goes to Sarah Prusty. Sarah has been brilliant to work with at training, bringing great energy and competitiveness to every session. While I'm sure her parents and teachers find her annoying her, at times, her talkative, outgoing nature is perfect for umpiring and controlling the play in big games. Um, she's always looked to improve our umpiring skills and knowledge every week. I remember after her first game when she was telling me about how she found the game different to playing. She remarked that sometimes at the centre bounces after a goal, she kept looking around waiting for the umpire to ball it up before realising realizing that she was the umpire and she had to do the ball up. Um, while she's also a gun footballer and in the running for the under-16 girls best and fairest in a few nights' time, um, if that doesn't work out, she has a great future as an umpire in the YJFL and beyond. Sarah's passion for footy and umpiring shows every time she's out in the field, and I look forward to helping her develop in the seasons to come. So congratulations to Sarah. Um, so for our final award of the night, the Golden Whistle, we'll pass it back over to Dave. You there, Dave? You're, on, you're still on mute, Dave. <laughs> While we're waiting for Dave, um, keep keep putting those claps in the on the screen. Any messages, congratulations for the award winners tonight. Um, look, as, as as coaching group, you have to think long and hard about all these awards, um, and so really. Um, congratulate all the award winners, but really encourage everyone else to keep working hard in their umpiring. Um, still seem to be having some technical issues here. He's dead, not sure what's happening. Seems like we might be missing. I'm not sure what's happening with Dave here. I know he had a few little technical difficulties when joining, so hopefully none of them have played up again here and you can join us in a few minutes. Um, seeing we're missing Dave, I might go ahead and award the winner of the Golden Whistle Award. Um, unless we get Dave back and he, he wants to say a few words afterwards. Um, um, so the winner of the Golden Whistle Award this year 
Um, the Golden Whistle is a very prestigious award. There's one handed out every year at each umpiring organisation, and it goes to usually the most committed umpire who shows a great dedication to umpiring and great skill level um, through it all as well. The umpire who's winning the Golden Whistle Award this year is an umpire who, over the past few seasons, has constantly been one of the top umpires at the league. Um, he constantly puts in effort, shows up to training, and helps a, being a leader at training as well. Um, and that that is definitely recognised, and we appreciate that. Um, the winner of the Golden Whistle Award for season 2021 is Andrew Chow. Congratulations to Andrew. Um, Andrew has, the past few seasons, been doing majority the Colts 1 and Colts 2 grades. Um, he's on the field, he demands great respect from the players, having umpired many games with him. He definitely has the respect and, and umpires the game at a high level. As an umpire umpiring with Andrew, I know I can always trust him to always be in the right positions when needed. It looks like we've got Dave back. Um, yeah, sorry, and, my apologies. I've had any trouble with my computer. My apologies. Did you want to say something, Dave? Or? Yeah. I want to say that I'll go and do a computer course after this, but other than that, <laughs> um, yeah, I got a bit frustrated. So I had a few troubles tonight. So, um, yeah, my just want to say, Andrew Chow, you're well-deserved as the um, Golden Whistle Award. It's a fantastic effort. Um, I've known Andrew's been umpiring now for six years. Um, he's been an amazing umpire at that time and just wants to learn all the time. And I actually, you actually remind me of actually a bit of the um, Matt Stabiak, actually, the way you umpire and the way you conduct yourself and just the way you go about it. You're level-headed. You do a fantastic job all around. People love umpiring with you. I had the pleasure of doing it a couple of times this year and I really like it because you told me what to do, which obviously I needed to, that needed to happen as well. Well done, Andrew. It's been a real pleasure that what you've done um, and we look forward to you continuing um, with the Yarry for many years to come. It's, it's a real pleasure to have you involved. Um, I can't talk highly enough. So you've got the award there. Maybe if you could, if you can show us the award, That'd be really good because it's a new award this year that the um that we did um, from the um from the AFL. Is that able to happen there, Aiden? No. Um, Dave, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, you gotta give me a tick to open it up. Um, but thank you, John and Dave, for those kind words. Um, just give me a second. Hold on, you're there, Aiden? Oh, oh. Sorry. Uh, Andrew? I think, I think I'm on here. There it is. Well done. Cheers, Dave. Cheers, John and Ben. Thank you. Just before I go, um, I neglected to thank a few other people before and just all the coaches, um, all the guys tonight, you know, the two Bens, John, John Taylor, John Tearley, everyone there, Julie and Harry, East, Noah, Maxes, all you coaches have done an amazing job this year and I just couldn't thank you enough. Um, just the way you conduct yourselves and the way you conduct yourselves all the time at training and everywhere there. So thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. The only thing I might get you to do is maybe help me out with some computer skills next time. But other than that, all good there. That's all. Well done too also for conducting the night and being the MC guys. Uh, look forward to... Um, you continuing with that. Ben, who's on the left-hand side, just one quick thing, Ben, umpired 300 games this year. An amazing effort. Well done, Ben. Back to you, guys. Thanks, Dave. Um, so that's all the awards we have tonight and what we've got planned. But again, I would also like to, as Dave said, pass on our thanks to firstly all of you umpires for showing up and umpiring with us this year. It was a very stop start. Um, and have after missing 2020, it was fantastic to see all of you back. I'd also like to pass on my thanks to all the coaches 
that coached with us and I'm sure helped out all our umpires. So from the bullying group, um, Harry, Harry Ray, East Watson with the boundaries, Noah Marshall, say, at the start of the year, uh, um, Max Willis, um, Julian Murphy and Dave, of course, and also Ben Lafay for doing the appointments. Um, the appointments can be a bit of a thankless job, and I know we've had many stressful conversations talking about the appointments, but um, well done and congratulations and well done getting through all of that. And also from the Linden Park group, I'd like to like to pass on my thanks to James Melville and Tom Graves, along with Seb Purcell, and of course, John Taylor, the stalwart of that Linden Park group, ben and Ben McDonnell, the boundary umpire coach. Um, John puts in a lot of work behind the scenes that no one gets to see. Um, his house is overloaded with umpiring stuff and his commitment is next level. And I don't think anyone realises that this league wouldn't run without the work that John puts in behind the scenes. Um, I'd also like to thank Nicole um, Robinson from the league. Many of you probably don't know who Nicole is, but Nicole um, runs all the dinners at the Bulleen Park group and all prepares all the trophies for this um for this presentation night and her work is definitely definitely behind the scenes but it can't be understated how important that is um i'd also like to thank dave as well dave as our umpiring manager i think is the title i can't really remember. um but the effort that dave puts in his dave's effort doesn't go just from february through the end of the season with us dave works on this all year round liaising with the league um, and getting the best for our, us as umpires. Dave's whole thing is looking after us as umpires and he'll do anything really to make sure we're looked after and we get the respect out there that we deserve on the field. So I'd like to pass on my thanks to Dave and all the other umpire coaches and support staff. And I'm sure I've missed out on a couple along the line there. Um, and of course, I'd like to thank the league and Aiden for putting together this presentation. Um, really well done, and yeah, couldn't have done it without you. So, I think Th thanks everyone for joining us tonight. Thanks for our special guests, um, uh, Tim Murray, Ishbel Moody, Nick Brown, and Matt Stevick. Um, good luck to the umpires, and we hope to see everyone back again next year. Um, apart from that, thanks for joining us, and have a good night. Thank you. Bye. See you again. Bye. Well done, John. <laughs>